Wow, it's really an honor to be here uh, on on such a day. This this uh, the startups you've seen here are uh, are much better than most of the conferences I go to in in the uh, United States. So, so um, really, really surprising. It shows that uh, uh, innovation is a worldwide thing now. It's not just one region. I, I'm. I go around the world and I interview tech executives about what they're doing, you know, and I uh, see some pretty cool stuff, but I'm noticing some things that are uh, changing in the world. Um, and it, this device I'm holding in my hand is one of them that's changing my life. But it's not the iPad that's changing everything. Um, it's the, the home is changing. That's one of the places that is under undergoing dramatic shifts. And we saw it today with the video camera. We're about to get video games that we have gestures with. And we're about to have video screens where I can gesture from a Comcast app that soon will come out at a TechCrunch conference. And I can slice music or videos over to my TV on a, on Comcast. Um, I'm sitting in my my home with this iPad now and watching movies on it, streaming from Netflix, while my son is watching his TV show on the big screen TV, and my other son is sitting with his uh, iPad playing a video game. We're now seeing games like Scrabble, where the surface of the uh, iPad is just one of the display surfaces. If we had four separate iP iPhones, the iPhones themselves are the number or the letter uh, controls and you push uh, letters from the iPhone onto the main display surface. Uh, if you look at Citrix, uh, Citrix, I could call into my corporate uh, computer and see Windows 7 running on an iPad, and the iPhone is the mouse controller for the iPad uh, system. And I've seen here in Israel several iPad devices that will come out over the next few few months that are using these kinds of new display surfaces, new touch surfaces, and new interaction methodologies to completely change how we're interacting with each other. Um, I look at a, the, one of the companies that competes with one of the companies today. SkyGrid goes through tens of thousands of streams and pulls out my the, the most interesting news and tweets Last night I had dinner with My Six Cents, who's a company here in Israel, and they're trying to find artificial intelligence to pull out of the stream that's going by. I have 18,000 friends on Twitter, and that's just a small little stream compared to the, to the fire hose feed that's available to everybody. And they're trying to pull out the really important information to put on your screen because we can't keep up with this anymore. It's It's way beyond any one human's ability to even watch a small fraction of the world's YouTube videos or a small fraction of the tweets. I remember when we could actually see all the tweets on one screen, <laughs> and that, those days are long gone. I'm, I'm seeing a fight, and, and at CureNet we had a really interesting conversation about how to get uh, coverage for the, the new tech companies. and. Um, one of the points of one of the business, the business week reporter who was there said, you have to find a, a way to hook on to the major news of the day. I, I call them battle fronts. And if you call it, talk to Mike Arrington, he has a real intimate sense of what the battle fronts are that's going on. Google versus Apple in the iPhone world and in the tablet world that Google will come out with a, a series of tablets later this year. That, that's a news story that you can hook your own startup into, right? Because as we buy new things, we're looking for new ideas to put on these new devices. And I, in just the last couple of weeks, I've spent $200 on, on apps, right? And I'm not alone. The Apple has sold 12 million apps so far uh, on a million iPads. So this is a pretty interesting idea. I, I pulled up, um, I pulled up uh, Google Profiles because I wanted to show um, what's happening with the profile world and where Google could get back into the market. I've put, I don't know, 40 different services into 
the right side here. I don't know if you can see all of them. But um, Google and Facebook are able to go and spider all of my behaviors on all of these different services. So when I check into Face Foursquare or when I tweet, when I put up a Flickr photo or when I put a video up on YouTube, Google knows about it and puts it places and redisplays redis that places. So far, Google is behind Facebook. Facebook is uh, uh, understands the social graph much, much better than Google or uh, even Twitter. How many people here have put a like button on their website in the last week and a half? A good chunk of the audience. Answers.com just, I think, today put like buttons on everything uh, around on their website. They're, they're the 18th largest website in the world. And I'm hearing this story over and over and over. Facebook is getting its fingers into lots of different websites. The NHL has like buttons on all the hockey players, right? So if you are into hockey, you go and click like on a player. Now Facebook knows what you liked, right? If you go to Yelp and you click like on a certain restaurant, it tell it, it Facebook knows this, right? And now can display all the restaurants in Tel Aviv that five of your friends have liked or more, right? Um, there's a lot a lot happening because of Facebook. How many people use like Spotify? And this is hard to get in Israel because I can't look at my uh, music like uh, I'm on a uh, Pandora, which is uh, a music service. But a week ago at Facebook's F8 conference, they shipped a new version. And all of a sudden I could see all my friends' music. And there's fights that are going on right now because they just screwed our privacy, right? Because I didn't know that all my friends were going to be able to see that I like ACDC or Daft Punk. But on the other hand, I'm addicted to this new feature now. And I'm finding new music that I, I never knew existed, right? Because I can go to each of you and go, hmm, what music do you guys listen to? And click on it and listen to it. And then put it in my own playlist. And all my friends now see that music. And it, I'm discovering more new music in less time than I've ever discovered before. Anyways, I wanted to start a conversation and see where it went and see if you had any questions for any of the other presenters here about where they think this world is going. We have some really interesting people from TechCrunch here. Uh, Orly is a, a, I don't know if you know Orly, but she's worldwide. <laughs> she's a worldwide brand. <laughs> and when I, when I planned to come here, uh, Orly and Ayala were the two, first two people I, I called because I knew that they knew everybody and they, and they would get us in the best companies. I've seen some remarkable companies here, um, a couple that are coming out. Uh, one's called Leebox, and it shows a, a, this continuing change of devices, right? I don't have just one device anymore. I don't have just a laptop or a PC. I have a PC, I have an Xbox, I have this, I have an iPhone, I have an Android phone. And I'm going to get more and more devices. Well, they connect all those devices. So you drop a video up in here and all of a sudden it appears on all my other devices and all my friends' devices. And that's really, really remarkable. Um, anyways, that's just a little taste into what I'm seeing around the world. Um, I could go for hours because it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for changing my world. I really appreciate it.